Hello everyone, and welcome to this latest episode of the Essays in Espresso podcast. I'm Azure Aesthetic, the new permanent host of the podcast. With me today is my usual comrade, Bogan Jima. How are Hello. you, Bogan? You know Bogan. You're, on, you're only going to be hosting for this week. Oh. Uh. You know, uh, Bogan, Daniel actually isn't here today. And uh, just between you and I, I've always thought that the two of us are the sort of glue that holds this podcast together. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're the nucleus of the yes. show. Yes, we are. With us today is Atmos. Atmos? Hello. Why don't you introduce yourself? Um, hi, I'm Atmos. My name is... No, that's not my name. That, I mean, that is my name. Anyway, I'm bad at introductions. Uh, I make YouTube stuffs just like everyone else that has appeared on this podcast. Uh, just like Dan, who I'm replacing today. Uh, I bleed, cry, and shit DMC most of the time, along with some other nerdy things that I'll probably Are you also a weep? A bit. Not as much as Dan, but a, okay. a bit. Good. Yeah. We don't like Within weeps reason. on this podcast. We, we barely reason. tolerate Daniel. <laughs> I'll, I'll fit in just fine then yeah Boken and I have talked about a Daniel insurance because he wakes up so much later than us that we'd need a uh, another podcast host preferably one in in Europe and preferably with a British accent but I, Atmos might just fill the void perfectly I don't have a British accent <laughs> my usual That's accent okay. leaks in from time to time which annoys me but I am in Europe so yeah this is the European how how would it go? EU essays and espresso. Pretty much. <laughs> anyway, uh, can I just essay... say, Atmos? Uh, I don't know if it's just me because I'm a foreigner, quote unquote. But you seem to have no accent at all to me, and that surprises me. Thank you, but I I still leak a bit of Georgia into my English from time to time. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, wasn't Joseph Stalin from Georgia? Yep. <laughs> Thanks wow. for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I was, I just uh, remembered. Anyway, today's essay topic will be PCs versus consoles. Which is better? This is the definitive video on this topic. Uh, I'm glad the we answer, can finally put it to rest. Yes, it's been a conversation for a couple of weeks now on the internet. They've been talking about it a bit. And we've decided it's time somebody answered it. The answer may surprise you, in fact. But first, I'm going to open up the Google Docs and see what our topics are. So, I guess, uh, who wants to start? Who wants to start? I'll start. I read the book Skin in the Game by Nassim Nicholas Taleb, or Nicholas Nassim Taleb. I, I can't remember which one. Uh, it was really good. Highly recommend it. Uh, I also played a bit of Nier Automata. <laughs> Great. It's not one. Of, <laughs> it's not. It's not really. A, <laughs> it's not really a book you can uh, delve too deep into. It basically talks. It's like uh, what's the word? Sociology or something. Basically, it goes into like ancient history and it talks about leaders of like Rome and how they were able to command respect much better because they had actual skin in the game. Those are the guys who went out onto the battlefield. It also went into Hammurabi's law. You guys are familiar with him, right? Vaguely. No. I know who Hammurabi is, but I don't really fuck with history. All that <laughs> well, uh, Hammurabi's law is one of these sort of early legal texts in history, and it's pretty barbaric. But it also has some insight, which Taleb argues we ought to bring back. Like, there was a tenant somewhere which read that if you were a construction worker, and you built a house, and the house collapsed, killing its owner, then you as a construction worker ought to be put to death too. And if it killed the owner's son, the construction worker's son ought to be killed. Now, <laughs> <laughs> we should be bringing that back, yeah? No, no, not necessarily the barbarism of it, but the idea that those who create risk ought to bear the brunt of the risk. Like that you can't just offload your own risk onto somebody else. He was arguing mm. that. Which, you know, it's a good book, but it's not a book that necessarily uh, but fits. That's kind of already the law, isn't it? Not really. I mean, you're, I you're mean, kind of a you bank goes keep... a bank goes belly up, and who bears the brunt of that? Well, <laughs> the banks, guy who ran the banks the bank? are a special case. Banks are way too powerful, but the individual is, is responsible for what he does. I mean, there's endangerment 
uh, you usually can't just hurt people. No, and say you it was can't. your job. You can't hurt people, but if you, uh, for example, if you build a house, I don't know how it is in Germany. You guys are a lot bigger stickler for rules if stereotypes are to be believed. <laughs> but uh, here in Iceland, if you build a house and you build it crappily and you somehow manage to get it into sales and like the house starts rotting when the owner takes it, then you're not really liable for that anymore. Falls on the owner. Anyway, this isn't well, a book. No, 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 no. <laughs> First of all, you don't just build a house. I mean, for, for big houses, for, for skyscrapers and all that, there are architects who design it. Yeah. And then there are people who oversee construction who are usually responsible for everything going right. Like yeah. if, if I'm a construction worker and I really did a bad mistake building the house and they can prove that, then I should be liable. And I think in most countries you are liable for that. You ought to be liable, but uh, like this is... I'm gonna. We have to move on from this subject. <laughs> no, no, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You're not just glossing over this that easily. No, hey, so, there is. Um, there is. <laughs> I majored in architecture for two years. Then I took a year off. Then I did another year, and then I quit. But I have some bit of expertise in like building things, and it's not even if the quote unquote law states that if you Uh, build a shitty house and it kills someone you ought to be liable that's like that's how it is because it's your fault you, you built the house but okay. uh, there's so many things that go into this process because there's engineers there's planners there's architects there's construction crew there's a process that takes years and years and it's not exactly uh common to build a house that just collapses from no it's that's totally fair weight. i i i'm totally willing to eat that i just made a bad example the point the point is that i also like being pedantic so that's the thing <laughs> the, the point the point of the book is that people should adopt responsibility for the risks they create and it's a bad idea to allow them th that's one of the points of the book and i made a bad i used a bad example there I, I'm not going to delve too deep into politics with this. Move on. I also played Nier Automata a bit. Have mm. you guys played it? No. Yes. That's a very good I, game. I want to very much, very soon. Okay. Uh, well, not delve too much into it. I'm not that far myself, and we don't want to spoil it. But, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I remember, when did it come out? 2016? 15, I think. No, 16. It was, was, it was that amazing year in video games where Breath of the Wild, Persona, uh, Neo Automata, Divinity Original Sin 2, all these amazing games came out. Uh, it actually came out in 2017, hmm. but in January yeah. of 2017. Yep. Wait, February. do I mean do I mean 2017? Then no, it Breath of the Wild came in 2016. When did the Switch come out? 2016? Breath of the Wild came out 2017. Yeah, okay. So then I mean 2017. Oh. I think 2019 has been a better year. But um okay. Yeah, I'm, why? Uh, because I think Resident Evil 2 was better than all of those games. DMC5. Okay. That's a that's just, a pretty just, hot just, take. Just but... DMC5, <laughs> DMC5. Done. And Devil May Cry 5 too. Uh, those are good games, but you really got to look at the list of 2017. Yeah, How I'm looking many at it. amazing games there were. I'm looking at it. We got a Breath of the Wild, which people fell in love with, even yes. though it was pretty good. <laughs> no, you're baiting me. <laughs> <laughs> What? No, I, I never. We got a Persona game, which Acer didn't play, so he can't review it. We got Divinity Original Sin 2, which Acer also didn't play, so he doesn't know if it was good or bad. It Same was here. very good. It might be one of the best RPGs ever made. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not far enough into Nier Automata to make a definitive statement because I, I've seen people refer to it as like one of the great games of recent years. Uh, I imagine there's something, some part of it which I haven't really figured out yet, which I'm going to. Yes. So, yeah. you're, you're not even through a route, right? No, no. I'm like four hours in or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to work your way through that yeah 
Uh, I'm enjoying a lot of it. I'm enjoying the gameplay. I like how it sort of <laughs> switches between being a third-person action game and then it's kind of like, oh, we're going to do a, uh, what's it called when you're bullet hell. flying it? Yeah, bullet hell. And then it'll do like, um, even when you're just moving between areas, it'll sort of lock you in a 2D plane where you can only move one or two ways in a three and like a 2.5D platformer. Not a platformer, though. Um, side yeah, scroller, yeah, two two point five. Side yeah. scroller, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I imagine I'm gonna play some after we finish this. You should definitely podcast. see it through to the end. There's, oh, I'm, there's I'm, basically I'm gonna. there's five endings. Um, well, uh, which is the canon? No, no. Well, the canon would be the the last of those. I mean, there's more than five endings. There's I think twenty six or something. Jesus Christ. Um, but five of those, uh, the, the like ending A to ending E are the main game. Everything you should see. And then the rest is like little stuff. For example, you might have seen in, your, in the menu, you can like rearrange your chips yeah. and your, your programs. And there's a chip that is basically your, 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 system, your system core. And if you pull, pull that out, you're gonna explode, and that's an ending. That's an ending you can unlock. <laughs> so those those little things can happen. So I need to play the game five times. No, no. It's kind of two and a half times, I guess. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, we'll see if Acer has the energy for that. It's not a long game, is it? <laughs> I think it's a couple of hours. Yeah, Maybe okay. 30, 40 hours. Jin! 30, 40? Yeah, depending on how much side stuff you do. <sighs> it's a JRPG. Well, what are you expecting? How Long to Beat says it takes 20 and a half for main story, 37 and a half for main extra, and 61 for completionism. Oh, oh my god. god. Uh, Jesus. Okay, you, so... You gotta see the real ending, though. I'm gonna see an ending, I think. No. You have to see <laughs> the ending. You cannot quit the, after... The you ending, quit. The plural. Yes. You know, it's usually... Whatever you do, do not quit after the first ending, after road A. It's usually Daniel who's uh, so pedantic about me engaging with the waifu shit, but <laughs> I didn't expect this assault today. Now we don't have him. Did you try and move the camera up to B's ass? Of course he did. Everybody did. I haven't played near, but no. I've done it. <laughs> Doesn't the camera lock itself to one of her sides? No. Oh. You can try to look up her skirt. Does something happen if I do? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? She's wearing underpants. I know that. Yes. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> she she actually swats away the camera. Really? Yeah, it's a complete <laughs> fourth wall break. <laughs> okay, that's pretty um, good. Lollipop Chainsaw had a thing <laughs> like that where you can since like the whole game is about a cheerleader who's also a zombie hunter somehow. I don't. It's a weird fucking game. Uh, if you try to peek up her skirt, she just after the camera reaches a certain angle, she just covers her underwear with her hands, and you can't actually look up her skirt. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll I'll either look up her skirt or I'll uh, get one of the endings. We'll see. We'll see how this develops. <laughs> but uh, I'm getting a phone I hate call. You so much. <laughs> I'm getting a phone call. I'm wondering, do you guys want to take the reins on a subject for a few minutes? How would you just do we... tell them to fuck off? Same here. Well, <laughs> okay, I have sure. my phone on airplane mode. Boy, that's. that's... Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll talk with them. I'll talk to them through SMS messaging. Short messaging message system. Yes. Very yes. good. Comrade. Let me ask you a question. Do you is WhatsApp a thing in your countries? No, kind of. I've heard about it, but I don't think we use Viber it. more than WhatsApp. I don't okay. use either. So the you you guys use like chat rooms. Or chat programs, but not WhatsApp. Mm, only Messenger, basically. Yeah. I use basically. only Messenger. I mean, you guys don't actually write SMS or texts, right? You don't use Rarely. the actual SMS system. 
Rarely. I use it. I use depends it for if, my depends grandma if I have money and my balance. mom. But texts Sorry. are completely useless if you have a messenger. No, they're not. If you don't have mobile data anymore because you're a poor fuck, uh, SMS is the only way to go. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to let either one of you now pick a subject. What have you guys been doing? What have you been doing, Boken? Okay, I've been watching a show that's called... Well, it's called Four Blocks, but I, it's a German show. And I think it's just Vier Blocks. Uh which I usually don't sh don't watch German TV shows because they're usually terrible. <laughs> I'm kind of ashamed of my country, but this one was... Well, we know, you don't even like Rammstein. <laughs> don't even. Me neither. I'm, yeah, I'm... They're, they're fucking boring. Yeah, just, I know, right? They're well, super poppy, boring rock, like pop rock with no substance. No, no. What about... It's just what edgy about for the sake of being edgy. No, you can't say that. What about the time where Till Lindemann had that uh, had that uh, dick hose and when he was spraying over the audience? Hey, what about that time when real musicians wrote really good music? And then oh my I God, listened to it back and in said, my wow, day. That's great. Okay, okay. <laughs> Boken, 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 listen, you're hugging the edge of I was born in the wrong generation and if I hear that from you, no, I'm no, disconnecting no. from this call. <laughs> I swear to God. I, I'm anyway. not saying that doesn't happen anymore. I'm just saying, hey, I, okay, I, I might have phrased that wrong. I was just going to say, you can talk about a music act and say, wow, their shows are so crazy and that's why I like them. I just like to, to listen to very talented musicians make music. Thank Boomer you. Jima. Better. Boomer Jima watched four blocks. What, what, what's it about? <laughs> I'm not a boomer. I said that yesterday. Awfully close, though. No, I still listen to music. I, I just switched genres because... Yeah, genres but you I listen to with. real music that real musicians make. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> that's actually true. <laughs> uh. Uh, okay. Uh, Four Blocks is a, a crime show that, I don't know, it, it's kind of like a kind of standard crime show. It's fairly well written, fairly well acted. The reason why I like it is because it's it's inherently German, because it, it takes place in, in Berlin. And ah, Berlin, Berlin, yeah! Sehr gut. <laughs> <laughs> and Berlin apparently has a massive, well, not a massive, but a problem with Arab family clans ruling the underworld. Oh my god! And that's what this is about. I mean, <clears throat> it's it's about gang gang crime, and oh. uh, apparently, I mean, I, I talked to to my colleague who lives in that specific uh, how do you say that that quarter of Berlin? No, that that part of the city of Berlin. It's called Neukölln. Um, mm. He he lives there, and he says, yeah, that's. The, that shit just happens and he currently there are a lot of uh, police raids on those those parlors they have and all that shit so apparently the show is fairly well researched and fairly close to reality i also after i finished the show there was a vice article on we got some real gangsters from berlin and watched four blocks with them <laughs> that's <laughs> what they said <laughs> Which I'm not sure if if that is entirely true, but uh, <laughs> I, I I choose to believe it was. And they okay. also said it's fairly fairly close to reality. Just some some details are off. Like in that one uh, scene where they discuss business terms, the one main character flips out and insults the mother of the other character, and then the other character just smiles it off. And in reality, you would have fucking blown his head off. Mm. Because family is very important to to these clans. It it should be important to everyone, I would argue. Sure, but they are like it's it's really one of the the main. Is it drives. like? Are they like the Italians in the thirties, where everything is about the family? Yeah. Well, no. Mm. I don't mm. know. The the families are part of their lives, and the main characters all struggle with their wives. And oh, the main character has has a little daughter, 
and they're kind of put in danger a couple of times. That kind of stuff, you know. But Do you think you could watch it if you don't have the uh, the appreciation of the Germaniness of it? Germaniness. <laughs> yes, I think you could still watch it as a fairly standard but decent crime show. Um, but yeah. it's the fact that I know these streets and I've been to that part of... I mean, I, I work in Berlin. I don't live there. I live right next door, essentially. But I'm in Berlin every day. And that p p specific part of Berlin, I've been there a lot. So mm. it's it's kind of crazy just seeing that shit and knowing that this is how it, how it works. And that, I mean, it's it's like the, the Yakuza's, right? You don't, as a normal human being, you don't interact with them. You don't see them, you don't notice them, but they're there. And mm. a lot of their money is uh, ill-gotten. And that's, mm. that's wild. And the police is kind of not able to, to get them all. So, yeah, that, that, that part of it was the most interesting. Um, the four blocks, by the way, that's, I think it's, it's like a, a double entendre, where the, the, it's the four blocks of, of their crime, of their money, which is uh, prostitution, uh, gambling machines, drugs. Uh, drugs, and what do you call it when... when you have to pay someone so that you don't get hurt. Extortion. Protection. Protect. Yeah, extortion. Extortion. Okay. Yeah, those are the four blocks. But it, I think it also means four blocks uh, of Neukölln. Fun so, fact, the, uh, the fifth block is heart, and together they create Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> also, four blocks seems like a small area for a, a giant clan with massive amounts of money. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if that is actually a double meaning or not. Uh. But yeah, so it's a fairly standard crime show. The, the characters have, have good arcs. Um, the, the acting is decent. It's two seasons right now. Uh, one is six episodes, one is seven, I think. And, you know, it's gang wars against these, these rocker groups who also want a part of the town. And then the next season is a gang war against another Arab clan. And yeah, it's uh, it's it's nice. Got some some German rap in there, which was fine. Uh, Got some street Ger credibility. German rap. Uh, don't go there, please, Acer. What? Don't go there. I beg you. Why? I've been down that road. You've been down the road of German German rap. <laughs> I have been taken down the road of German rap once, and I never want to go back there. Do you Is even, it more cringy than German? Icelandic rap? I speak a bit of German. Okay, yes. and what what did you listen to? I don't fucking know something, some German rap. Um, <laughs> I don't remember. My brain blocked out all the traumatic memories of that evening. Was it a guy a guy with a migrant background rapping about how he's making money and fucking bitches? <laughs> <laughs> Probably yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of German rap. A lot of <laughs> Berlin rap specifically. Ah, the expert on <laughs> German rap, ladies and gentlemen. I actually, uh. I used to listen to a lot of rap. Um, and then it got bad. <laughs> <laughs> then real artists stopped to making yeah. rap. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I am not against rap, and I think Germany has some good rappers, but. Uh, there was a specific kind of rap that, yeah, I grew up that with. That was such then... a robotic way of putting it, too. Was it a guy with a migrant background rapping <laughs> about how he <laughs> makes money and fucks bitches? I could use other terms, but those yeah, are not just... PC at all. No, it's just the... Hey, I don't care me. about PC at all, so unless there's a YouTube well, thing I, that we're afraid I do of. care okay. about it. <laughs> No, it's, I think PC is over. I think that the pendulum has sort of swung back and people are okay to say things again, right? No, you shouldn't no? go. No, <laughs> no it's, it's not just, like... It's an easy shorthand, some of the terms I could use, but I don't want to use them. Yeah, yeah. Don't be a dick, but, you know, self-center, fine. Censor, fine. Uh, so, yeah, four blocks, good. Ramstein, bad. Yes. Is the takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I'm not so, sure like, if I would recommend the show, but I, I genuinely don't know if there... I think there aren't even English subtitles for it. Hmm. I think that's how German-only the show is. Yeah. Is, it, yes. is, the f is the 
is the fear spelled with the number four or V I E R? Yeah, number. Yeah, number. Okay. And that's why I think it's it's fear and not four. Ah, uh, yeah. Why do you German? Why do Germans use F when V is in the the first letter of the uh, word? What? Because languages are weird. Oh. Yeah. Like you read the V as F. That's weird. Yeah, because languages are weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. we have so many weird letters in Georgian. We have a H in Georgian. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. We have a H. We have a Ch. We have a Z. A J. <laughs> uh, but we don't have an F. We have a P, but we don't have like an F. The most uh, excessive Icelandic one is when you put two L's together, it makes a K sound. Really? What? Huh? Yes. How does so, that work? Icelandic has clicks? Yeah, well, clicks. It's. Hjartna um, koma atlir. It's not a. It's more of a. Okay. So the it. L's in Icelandic aren't really L's. There's something uh, else. L. L. Okay. That's an L. <laughs> See, I, the, the interesting part about Georgian is that uh, to make a very simple example in order to speak english right you have to read it wrong you know you got to swallow some letters say this is pronounced like this when these two letters are together in this certain order we don't have none of that the way you write is the way you read there's no intonations there's no swallowing letters because a, a t and an h are together so it's not a t but it is a the and we have like this whole system where what you write is what you read, and what you read is what you write. It's very simple. Yeah. But it's, at the same time, one of the hardest languages in the world, somehow. <laughs> I just realized we, we could have done a uh, German bo- podcast and then had Daniel edit it. <laughs> Oof. Since we all sort of speak the language. I don't speak <laughs> German nearly well enough. To you always say you speak German. I still don't believe you. Guten Tag. Oh, <laughs> warum wow. sagst du das? <laughs> that, that was <laughs> better than what I just said. <laughs> Tiny bit of experience. Uh, I'm, I'm I, thinking of Rammstein lyrics right now. <laughs> <laughs> du, du hast mein Herz in Flammen. Edge. Now, Don't I cut yourself uh, on all that edge. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I just learned it in school, and I haven't used it in like six or seven years so i probably forgot most that's of it that's what i did with french and my french is essentially non-existent yeah that's probably my german same anyway we want to move on uh do we want to talk about tarantino i always want to talk about tarantino okay let's take it away. let's talk let's talk about tarantino atmos yes I feel like I just interrupted you while oh, you were going to okay, start. Since, since I actually oh, I wasn't starting. I was just, sta- I was just oh. making a statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since I actually brought the topic in, uh, I watched Death Proof yesterday. And it was a whole lot of fun, which surprised me because I know that's the one of the lower valued movies of Tarantino. Yeah. but Death Proof is the one which sort of reinvigorated Kurt Russell's career, right? That might be. I don't know. It sort of pivoted him back. I, Kurt, into Kurt the Russell spotlight. only recently came into my life, and I think I need to watch more movies with him. Uh, have you seen Big Trouble in Little China? No. Have you oh seen boy. any of the John Carpenter Kurt oh Russell movies? Bo- no, yes, I need to watch the thing and make Big it Trouble from my in life. Little China is a John Carpenter uh, Kurt Russell movie, and it's the best action movie I have ever seen. It is. A complete masterpiece. I might even do a video on it one day. It's just, there's also there's mm. also a television movie uh, directed by John Carpenter where Kurt Russell plays Elvis, and it is the best Elvis movie. Kurt Russell is like secretly the greatest actor of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Hateful Eight, and I didn't really like. I watched the movie, and I didn't really recognize that it's Kurt Russell, but I thought, man, that that guy is awesome. You know. Yeah. I just it didn't really register who he is. And now that I'm, I'm more aware of him, I see him more. Did you He's... see Bone Tomahawk? 
No. This is the Kurt Russell uh, topic, not the Tarantino topic. <laughs> <laughs> Bone Tomahawk was a video. Uh, Red Letter Media just made a video on Bone Tomahawk, and then I that's right. They I did. watched that and I looked up that scene. Yeah, and that was really fucking rough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Patrick Wilson is also in that movie, and he's also a great actor. I've uh, for a long time petitioned that he should play uh, Mr. Fantastic when the Mar- when Marvel reboots the Fantastic Four. Uh, who, 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 who now? Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson. Rings a bell. The main guy in the... Uh, oh, right, conjuring. yeah. yeah, Night yeah, Owl. yeah. Who is it? I Night Owl, yeah. I thought he'd make a good... He'd make a good Mr. Fantastic. I right? I get behind this, yeah. He has the the perfect amount of high I have been studying... For yeah. my entire life, but I'm also kind of a charmer, and I have kind of I'm, I'm a bit witty, you know. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Yeah. He was Ocean Master in Aquaman. Was he? Yeah. I didn't see Aquaman. I, it wasn't that good. I gave up on this. Whoa! What a shock. Oh. Yeah. Wow, guys, the Aquaman movie wasn't good. Uh. But but yeah, uh, Tarantino. Pivoting right back. He's a he's a he's an interesting character. We uh we see the we didn't really have this topic detailed when we wrote it down. We were gonna talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but Atmos hasn't seen it, and we don't want to spoil it. Yeah, thank you. So, <laughs> so Bogan, talk us more through Death Proof. Uh, what I can say also about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is that Tarantino's movies. I I thought that at this point I know stuff about movies, but Tarantino makes me realize that I don't because I don't get Uh most of the references that he goes for. I mean, uh, I kind of came into enjoying movies fairly late, so I have no fucking clue how Grindhouse works. I mean, I know the term. I know roughly what it is, but uh, apparently this is a Grindhouse movie and it was like a double feature with Planet Terror or something. Mm. So that's weird. And then I was like, why is the the screen blurry? Why are these scratch marks that are obviously added in? And then someone told me he's, do- he's doing Grindhouse style and that meant nothing to me. So I'm not <laughs> going by that. I'm going by the, the movie itself. The stri- like, it's just a weird movie, basically nonsense, but it's so enjoyable and it's so well paced in my opinion. I know a lot of people don't think so because the first half is just dialogue, but that Tarantino knows how to write dialogue, I think. Mm-hmm. And I could just, I could just watch these characters talk. Um, and then there's a lot of stuff that within the, the talking scenes gets set up for, for later reveals or later twists on something and that totally works and then of course there's hey, so you hasn't you haven't seen it right no do you care no. about spoilers yes not really like is this one of those movies which really get spoiled i care about spoilers don't spoil the movie for me Vulcan. but you have uh, seen death okay. proof right i've seen death proof yes but yeah i was just going to talk about that yeah okay you can Actually, you can spoil death proof the funny thing is i mean i'm, I'm gonna say and I hope you know this, but okay, what what do you know about Death Proof? Me? Yeah. It's a car movie about a bunch of women who go after Kurt Russell. Yeah. So you yes. know that, that Kurt Russell is the villain. Yes. And I'm not sure how that movie was marketed back in the day, if people who went in knew that Kurt Russell is the villain. Um, because if you don't know, then I can see watching the first half and thinking this is going nowhere, what the fuck is happening, right? Mm. Um, and then shit you, hits the fan. Yeah, Yeah, and then shit hits the fan, and then you know he's the villain. But if you know he's the villain from the start, then you're just watching Kurt Russell take over the screen, and you're just thinking, man, when is he going to snap? Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> don't they shoot him in the balls or something near the end? I don't remember mm. that well. Huh. They they get him, yes. Oh, uh, well, okay. <laughs> Vague. <laughs> But yes. okay. Vague, but exciting. Pokin touched up on dialogue in Tarantino movies. And I want to add to that. Isn't the entirety of The Hateful Eight is just people talking in one room? Yes. But that's that why movie, that's my favorite movie. Yeah, okay. that movie had me tense. That movie it's, had me tense as it's shit. It's like two, two and a half hours of basically a screenplay. Uh, uh, sorry, of a stage play. It's a stage play more and so than a And it's wonderful. Film. 
It's mm-hmm. wonderful. I, that, that is one of my favorite movie premises where you just have one house, one room, whatever, and a couple of characters. And that's what, what, is, what the entire story is. And someone dies or everyone dies. Yeah. Whatever. Or there's something happens and they have to get out or people turn out to not be who they said they would be and all that. But yeah, the limited movies with a couple of characters in very few locations. When when that works out, when the script is good, that is usually what really gets me. Yeah. And hateful eight is bad. Have you guys watched Pulp Fiction recently? Recently, no, no not recently. No. See, I uh, I urge anybody to watch that movie again. I think it doesn't really hold up as well as people want it to be want it to. Because like an. I think the movie is good when Samuel L. Jackson is on screen and when Bruce Willis is on screen. But the first half of the movie, it's just Tarantino, who has no charisma, and uh, Uma Thurman, who also has no charisma. Do you mean John just... Travolta? Yeah, John... What did I say? Tarantino. Tarantino. Oh, uh, John Travolta, I should say, <laughs> who has no charisma. Tarantino has... He's oozing with charisma. <laughs> but uh, it's just them being dickheads for an hour or so and then the movie finally gets started it's a similar with uh reservoir dogs even though that movie jumps around a bit more i think uh i don't think i agree uh, i think reservoir dogs is fairly even i think reservoir dogs is very much like a like th- that it speaks like the a director's first movie was it his first movie was it, it was Jackie Brown his first movie? No, no. I think that's early 2000s. I think it's his first... He may have done like commercials or something before that. It's his first yeah, directed Reser- movie. Yeah, Reservoir He's, Dogs. He wrote his some first movies. Mm-hmm. He wrote uh, Natural Born Killers or something. Or no, uh, True American Romance or True Romance, I believe. No, Reservoir Dogs came a year before True Romance. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Anyway, uh, that's sort of just my little tangent. I think that he has gotten progressively better. Uh, I don't think his earlier movies are as good as people often say they are. And I actually think that, and just sort of, not without without spoiling it, I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is his best movie. That's a big thing to say. It makes me excited. I, yeah. Yeah, it is. But it's probably true. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood completely went over my head because I had very little knowledge of the the era that he was going for yeah. and the have references you, he did. Have you watched movies from that era, though? Like Bullet or anything like that? No, no. No, they're, they're all like that. Like, they're, they're, like, not to spoil, but like, there'll be just a 10-minute scene where they're just sort of in traffic or where a guy is walking down the stairs to answer a phone you don't see that in movies today like when a phone rings it just immediately cuts to the conversation it's uh there was i think it was in dr no the first james bond movie where he was in some casino and the phone rang and the woman answered it and she was like the voice was is mr bond there and she went oh oh yeah sure and she walks Hey, Mr. Bond, if the phone is for you. And then she goes away, and then he's walking down the stairs to answer the phone, and the music goes down, 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 down. And he's just walking <laughs> downstairs. There's like nothing exciting <laughs> happening on screen. That's sort of indicative of how movies of that era were like. And I think Tarantino, he really captured it, and I think he sort of elevated it in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So if, it I, may- were, if the movie. Uh, correctly pays homage to what it wants to pay homage to god english is mute um <laughs> if like if the elements of like i'm not big on grindhouse i haven't i don't think i've seen a grindhouse movie maybe i have maybe i haven't who knows but like if the elements that are an integral part of grindhouse are not changed not modernized but like recontextualized into how movies are made today and like not just mm-hmm. making a 10 minute walking uncut mont 
segment uh-huh. of the film where just da na 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 da na 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 guy just walking down the stairs. But like if you take what that scene is supposed to do, like either narratively or emotionally, and like convey that message in a similar editing fashion, but not exactly to what was done like 40 years ago, then, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's a hard balance to strike, but I, I don't think Tarantino has problem with balance because he has, you know, he made a movie that was almost three hours long where people only talked and it was awesome so yeah has tarantino made a bad movie um bad no he's made movies that are not up to par with his usual stuff but he's never made a bad movie yeah basically that's what i'm thinking and i think the the rest is just filled in by yeah what do you you like what uh, do you want from a movie you, if the, if you could say, like, uh, a lot of people say Kill Bill 2 and uh, Jackie Brown are sort of bad. But they're only bad because you have you have to compare them to his other work. True. On their own, they, they totally work. Yes. I haven't mm-hmm. seen Jackie Brown, but I'm a, Kill Bill 2 was pretty all right. I've yeah. seen Jackie Brown, but, and, it, it, like, it's a good movie. It's an enjoyable movie, but when you know that hey, this director has done much better movies and you could be watching those instead, uh, kind of shifts the focus from the actual movie and you sometimes you might think that, hey, I could be watching, I don't know, uh, Kill Bill or Sin City or Glorious Bastards or whatever. He didn't do Sin City. That was Robert Rodriguez. Uh, he was involved in Sin City. He was a partial director. Oh, mm-hmm. oh that's right. He directed the uh, the scene where the dead guy was talking. I don't remember which one he did, but... Where something. Benicio del Toro had been killed and was talking to him. Ah, shit! I haven't yeah. seen Sin City two. Is Sin City two any good? From what uh, I heard, no. Okay. I've, from what I've heard, it's as good as the first one, but it just—it was way too late. Uh huh. It came it came out in twenty fourteen. Sin City came out. Uh, Two thousand three or four or whatever. Five. Yeah, wow. nine years. Nine years is a bit too long. Speaking while we're on the topic of movies, how's everyone on Harry Potter in here? I used to like it, but um, I don't really like it anymore. I claim to hate it, but I am very ambivalent towards it. Mm-hmm. I grew <laughs> up with Harry Potter. Uh, it was very important to me when I was, you, you know, in my teenage years. But I haven't really looked into those books uh, s- ever since I actually started thinking critically about media. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how much it would hold up if I did. Mm-hmm. I don't know about books because I haven't read any of the books since the last one came out, Deathly Hallows. Uh, but I did rewatch all of the movies like either early this year or late last year. I kind of did a marathon, four days, hunkered in bed, not moving a muscle. <laughs> but um, so the first two movies are. A bit too Christopher Columbus. I don't think there's any other way to put it. Like, it's too magical. Then, you know, three is the best one, undoubtedly. Ta da 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 da. Anyway, Harry Potter is good. I love Harry Potter a lot, including the movies. But I did not see Fantastic Beasts at all. I had this preconceived notion that, hey, this is gonna try to pull on my nostalgia. <laughs> nostalgia <laughs> strings and you know just work off of that so hey look this is in the harry potter universe so you should like it so i didn't watch either the first one or the second one a couple of days ago i had spare time so i watched both of them even though the general consensus among critics is that the first one is the superior film i would like to flip that concept around because the first one did not exactly excite me. It was a fun movie. It was very enjoyable to watch. You know, it was pretty. David Yates is a good director. But it was still this, hey, like, this is a summer blockbuster that relies on your investment into the Harry Potter, Harry Potter franchise, even if you don't know anything about the franchise because you don't really need to. I walked away kind of, ah, 
okay, I guess. But then I watched the second one. At when I watched it, I didn't know that not a lot of not as many people liked it as the first one. I liked the second one a lot more because uh there was little to no fan service in the first one. Like maybe a name drop. Oh look, it's a house elf. But like nothing that's directly winking at the camera that hey, you're a Harry Potter fan, here you go. In the second one, how are we with spoilers on this, by the way? It's fine, it's, it came out like, what, two years ago? I think, yeah. We can spoil that. Yeah. Dumbledore appears and he's young, and uh, we, you go to Hogwarts, and there's you, well, all young. of this. <laughs> he's played what? by a Jude Law who's like 50. Well, yeah, <laughs> but Michael Gambon is almost dead, so he's young by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that invested me personally into the plot was something that a lot of people disliked. Like, the entire, like, the last four, 30 to 45 minutes, like, the entire third act is mostly people talking and plot twists everywhere. You're him. You're you. You two are relatives. Oh, no, your brother is actually not this dude, but a person you swapped out a baby. So, like, it's like a fucking brazilian soap opera but because all of these characters that are involved in this like 10 person plot pot plot pot hey that's a title for something paul pot plot pot hmm. uh so like if there's a lestrange in there there's albus in there there's the dumbledore's brother in there all of these characters like not only does do the developments radically change how the next three movies are going to play out, which is how I think that's there's five planned in total. But after those are done, or even now, if I like sit down and watch Harry Potter like tomorrow, the whole thing, my experience with Harry Potter is going to be a lot, a lot better because I know of the things that happen in fantastic beasts and the things that the characters go through and like i know that grindelwald is defeated at the end because he's not in harry potter but knowing that there was this connection between him and dumbledore it feeds into his character and makes me understand that character better in the media that got me into this whole endeavor so fantastic beasts is good i like it very good wasn't uh aren't Dumbledore and Grindelwald lovers? Yeah, they were lovers and they had a blood oath that they can't fight and the only person that can beat Grindelwald is Dumbledore on a like a raw power level uh scale. Hmm. And one of the also one of the drawbacks well that was for that movie but I don't really see another way that that could go is that the second one ends on a very Deathly Hallows part 1 ending where, like, Deathly Hallows part, part 1 ends with uh, Voldemort opening up Dumbledore's grave and he takes out the Elder Wand and there's this epic shot of, like, lightning and shit and then, boom, cut to credits, you'll see the rest, like, next year. There's mm. kind of a same, not as plot twisty and, like, not as cliffhangery as in Deathly Hallows, but Fantastic Beasts does that too, where they, uh, Albus just raises his hands, his magical handcuffs come off that keep him from using magic or some plot related device and then him and the main trio talk how are we going to break this blood oath so we can beat this dude so he doesn't ruin the world and then the movie ends mm. it's a good movie i liked it um it makes it made me a lot more excited for the future of the franchise because it gives you like when i watched the harry potter movies i knew what was going to happen in those movies because i read the books but here I don't have that background to rely upon. Like, I have no idea how this story is going to play out, and I know that it's going to be good. Or at least I have faith for now. Mm. Anyway, enough of me. Who wants to talk next? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're 50 minutes in. Bogan, can you do this? Can I do what? Weren't you going to talk about something? No. Oh. Did you have the topic list open? I exhausted mine. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Ahmos, do you... Uh... You wanted to talk about uh, Marvel shows. Yeah. Or uh, I'm wondering if we just pivot straight into 
Well, there's not a lot to talk about Marvel shows, so we can just kind of touch up on it. New three new Marvel <laughs> shows. The, so got few announced. around, apparently. <laughs> Moon Knight, She Hulk, and uh, Ms. Marvel are going to be Disney Plus shows. And we got a trailer for The Mandalorian, which is also going to be on Disney Plus, but I'll pirate it because I'm not giving Disney any money. <laughs> Disney, you're you really you're gonna cut into Disney's profits by doing this, you know. Yeah, sue me. You the can't sue me here. Is not going to be in cinemas? No. It's a TV Great. show, I think. Isn't it? Wait, yeah, it's, it is. it's a TV it show. Is. Fuck that. I think, yes. Fuck that. Yes, shit. it's an eight it's an eight episode miniseries. <sighs> they hey. don't want to make they don't want to make Star Wars movies anymore because the last one flopped so horribly. I like the last one. I like the last I one. Can't. The solo movie. There are so many TV shows. How yes. am I yeah. supposed to watch them all? Yes, I know that feeling. That's why I'm very happy that all of these Marvel and Disney things are just like, hey, hey, here's eight episodes that you can finish in like two sessions. And you yeah. don't have to see 80 episodes of an anime. Dan's Did- last schedule be damned. <laughs> did they announce who was going to play Moon Knight? No, they did not announce anything at all regarding any of those properties, except that we're getting Kit Harrington in the MCU because uh, I, don't I don't like, like him. That I don't. Much. I don't like Kit Harrington. He looks like he's going to. He's on the verge of tears just all the time. <laughs> he's just going to yeah. compulsively start crying. Who the fuck casted him as a villain in Call of Duty when you had Kevin Spacey before that? Yeah, Kevin Spacey at least had the decency to rape a couple of kids. I, I know, right? Hey, I, whatever <laughs> Kevin Spacey did, he's still a great actor. So I don't. Yeah, can't. Did you know? Yeah. Uh, mm. Sort of getting into a sour note. Sour. Did you know? Yeah, well, yeah. you know, uh, because Kevin Spacey was conflated with that whole Harvey Weinstein thing, and look, what Kevin Spacey did was not acceptable. But I think it's really disingenuine when people like placed him with Harvey Weinstein Kevin Spacey was sexually molested by his own father and he had a massive history of psychological problems going back to his childhood like that guy like Harvey Weinstein was a disgusting animal but you can make sort of a case that Kevin Spacey was just like he did wrong but you can sort of get it better because he was traumatized while yeah. when he was young yeah but what not, not what, making not making any excuses yeah, unfortunately, no, this is absolutely not, not absolutely not but what i really hate about cases like this it happened with johnny depp it happened with kevin spacey like okay this actor that you used to like uh turns out he's a monster or something whatever saying yeah. that everything he has done in his career because of that single act is now worthless like seven is still a masterpiece and you mm-hmm. can't convince me that if someone hasn't seen seven and sees that plot twist like at the end of the movie that hey this killer is actually played by kevin spacey and he's horrifying in that role you're just gonna go oh no so you know kevin spacey is a rapist so this movie <laughs> like this like that's well, the kind of mindset the movie, that i hate no the, the movie is not bad or worthless of course but it uh, yeah it, it hinders your enjoyment it hinders my enjoyment I it can't... hinders my enjoyment knowing that da, 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 but like his performance yeah. is still his performance yeah obviously i mean there. no one's mm-hmm. saying he's not a great actor you know yeah but i it's kind of like Louis ck is still a great comedian but i can't watch his shows anymore I just yeah but can't. it's sort of like uh when uh, like we look back now at like john wayne movies and they all suck but you know he was kind of a shit <laughs> they they all sucked i'll say that and he was kind of a shit guy but like i don't know i feel like the work should exist independent of the person it's also with a guy like johnny depp now it's coming out that actually he may not have been the scumbag people were told he was mm-hmm. did you guys yeah did you guys i, I see, saw that see the article with his finger i didn't even know he's a scumbag honestly. i heard a rumor but i haven't read the article yeah, uh, well, she apparently she cut off his finger while he was sleeping, but, or something like that. Uh, oh, oh, uh, mm. But we're sort of uh, getting out of the paradigm of this podcast, so I think <laughs> we should uh, <laughs> get to our essay topic. But first, I I see we we really just want to do a politics podcast, don't we? 
<laughs> I don't want to do a politics Always podcast. Always go back to it. Honestly, I, 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 mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, okay. Uh, so if we're, we're talking take a break. about new. Wait. Okay. <laughs> we take a break? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask you nerds a question. Ask oh. us. Ask us. Quip. Nerds. Fuck. Ask us a question. There we go. I can talk again. Yeah, because you guys are comic nerds, right? Very yes. I wouldn't say I'm a nerd. Uh, I'm, 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 you are a I'm, fucking nerd, Asa. I have been way too far gone for more than a decade. Hit me with that shit. Okay, so I'm not a nerd, and wow. if, if I see yeah, the, sure. <laughs> if I see the uh, literally a stormtrooper s- helmet on your storm avatar, literally a stormtrooper on your avatar. I'm not a nerd. Anymore. What? That's Star Wars is completely mainstream. Oh, and and superheroes aren't. Okay, you got me there. <laughs> Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So if I see the uh, Marvel plan of these are the 25 billion upcoming shows and movies that we have planned, mm. uh, that makes me want to vomit. So <laughs> which of these is actually worth my time? Which of these should I pay attention to? Um, uh, okay. <laughs> well, so far, we don't know any anything about phase four we don't even have a trailer there's a black we don't trailer have that we don't have shown, any creative team for these shows do we nope nothing uh. absolutely nothing i know that uh doctor strange and the multiverse of madness is going to be fucking eclectic i'm 100% yeah that one looks sure. interesting because i love the first one it's not the most original tale like oh a cocky person becomes humble and now he's a superhero Woo! <laughs> that's uh, every marvel movie ever. but yeah but like the oh, visual... a, cocky hero, a cocky guy is already a superhero and then he does something yeah but like the visual direction in doctor strange because it's 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 an acid it, trip it's on very screen. faithful to the uh steve ditko panels it is also very faithful to a lot of different drugs and substances <laughs> by the way so uh <clears throat> ma- like mixing that with the horror background of the director that's interesting also scarlet witch is going to be in there uh and wandavision which is going to be the weirdest thing marvel has ever done quote unquote uh is going to tie into multiverse of madness and i think marvel is building up scarlet witch to do the whole uh, house, of M house of m thing where she just goes cuckoo and yeah flips i'm interested black phoenix no, no. Not even remotely. No, wait, what, what's it called? The Red Phoenix? Dark the Phoenix. Phoenix Force. Dark Phoenix. The Dark Phoenix. That's, that's, that's Jean Grey. Dark Gray. Phoenix is the movie. Yes, I know that's Jean Grey. Thanks. House of M was when Scarlet Witch decided that there weren't going to be any more mutants. And she removed everyone's powers, except for a few people. And no, no, no. Created no. Uh, what? No. An, no, no, no. It no. created an alternate universe where things were a bit different, right? Basically, she did yeah. She did the switcheroo where the mutants are the minority in our current world. She did it the other way around where humans are the minority. And oh, only, that's right. Yeah, and only Wolverine had the memories from the old world, and it's just about reverting everything back. That was really, like, so, so she created My Hero Academia. It was really <laughs> fun to see uh, Doctor Doom and Magneto as these sort of European royals who were sort of diplomatically trying to strong arm each other <laughs> yeah but i mean the, they do have to build up scarlet witch for that i think uh, wandavision because house of m like the catalyst for scarlet witch going crazy was the death of her children or child i don't remember if there was one or more but i think it was uh, just one the father is vision vision is dead because the mind stone is no longer a thing so I think they are going to build up the relationship that Wanda and uh, robot Paul Bettany had in WandaVision, and that will tie into Madness and Scarlet Witch, because Scarlet Witch is insane, and then has, at some point she's just going to snap her fingers and bring in mutants into the MCU. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. I should yeah. know. But hey, Do you it's think mystery. Uh... It's good. Do you think Magneto is going to be your father? Do you think they'll retcon it? I don't know. I don't think... I think... They could, honestly, because... 
uh, Magneto could just show up and say that, hey, remember me? Wait, I'm your on. dad. I used to be dead, but mm, I'm not dead anymore. Wait, 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 wait. Can the X-Men now appear in Marvel U movies? Yes. Yeah. Then they will. X-Men and Disney. Fantastic Four. Oh, they they, Dis- got, they bought the rights. Mm-hmm. They bought Fox. They bought right. Fox oh, yeah. <laughs> in its entirety. Isn't it wonderful that Disney was able to buy Fox and lose so that Spider-Man. we can get more super... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they lost Spider-Man. Oh, well. Well, there's remember all these, that. these artistic visions that are completely dependent on rights being swapped from one billion dollar company to another. One yeah. billion dollar company? From a Ten billion, billion dollar. multi-billion, uh, dollar, what the fuck ever. You get my point. Yeah. If you want to sort of get a breakdown of what to look, out, uh, look forwards to, I think the only new thing I'm really interested in is Moon Knight, and that's only on the name. Uh, and that character in the comics, it like a bad casting, a bad cast, or a bad production crew surrounding that would completely kill my enthusiasm for that. Oh yes, ditto. Same here. Because I know people were clamoring like back in, before this. People have been clamoring for like the guy who made the raid to just remake the raid with Moon Knight. Just give him ten million dollars or whatever, and just do the raid again, but with Moon Knight. And that I think that's the right way to do it. I really am not excited to, for them to go into that, um, like those Egyptian gods and all that weird stuff. But but maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll, I mean, there's gonna be retcons to the lore because you can't 100% faithfully transition a character from on screen to nah. From also, page, from which, page to screen. There we go. Words. Which which version are they going to use? Are they going to use the billionaire or are they going to use the taxi driver? Who's probably also the, same the guy? Probably the taxi driver. Yeah. Because like another billionaire, who, there is just going to draw more Batman comparisons. What's it? But He's honestly, Mark Spector, Mark, right? Mark Spector. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he also has a uh, split personality disorder, which is the thing that makes Moon Knight interesting. He's yes. like Mark Spector, the taxi driver. And a 12-year-old girl at the same time. And sometimes he's a billionaire. Sometimes he's a billionaire. I hope they'll retcon that. As I said, more Batman comparisons. Hey, it's a caped dude who walks around at night. He's a billionaire and beats up criminals. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, now we're going to go take our break. Get ourselves some coffee. Maybe you should get some coffee. Or maybe you should press L on your keyboard and jump 10 seconds ahead if you're listening to this on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And we're back. So now we're going to get into the essay question, essay topic, I should say. PCs versus console. Which is better? Which is worse? Let's decide. I think consoles are better. Thanks for listening. Specifically, Bye-bye. Xbox. <laughs> bye bye. Hey, I'm an Xbox boy too. Look, if there is a. Uh, if there is such a thing as a, a master race, I don't think it's the Xbox. <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> sort well, of putting that out there. Uh, the I I I have a lot of repressed uh, opinions about Xbox. I've had <laughs> um, for like seven or eight years. I've only played video games on an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One. Ah. So number one, no PS3, no PS4, no PC. Just these two things that sit under my TV. Yeah, you and said uh, you just said this while we were uh, a bit when we were making coffee. You haven't had a PC in what six, seven years? A PC of cap- capable of handling any video gaming that is not PS One, Game Boy, or Nintendo sixty four emulation. <laughs> it has been about yeah seven ish, seven odd years. Talk me through this. How does this work? Well, uh, as a uh, gamer, it's very fucking simple. You just play video game games on your console and weep over the games that you won't, that you're not able to play. <laughs> you just watch and a let's play. No, I don't even watch let's plays. I, I'm just waiting to buy Journey because fucking I love Abzu to death, and I beat myself. I I have 
I know the soundtrack to Journey almost by heart, but I haven't played the game, which mm. is sad. I haven't played the game either, and I'm I'm afraid that because it, it has been talked up so much that it just will never reach to what it's in my mind. You know what I mean? Uh, I learned to somehow like i can't let go of the factor that hey like this game has been praised for fucking years and it's one of the best things ever made and you have when you have to play the game with that context in mind it's not going to be that good but yeah that's the mindset i watched endgame with because like i didn't even think it would be better than infinity war and it wasn't as a film but it satisfied all of my needs at least almost all of them and like i know what i'm getting into are you baiting me into another superhero chat? <laughs> no. Maybe, maybe, maybe next time Dan decides to take a break. <laughs> yeah, uh, Journey's fine. It's pretty good. Journey is indeed fine. Mighty fine. Anyway, as not having a PC as a YouTuber, this is the topic that has been <laughs> very painful for me for a very long time. So, uh, July 31st was the second anniversary of my channel, which is when I made the first video about movies, which is about the MCU, wink, wink, Acer, watch my video. Um, <laughs> okay. But um, f for the first year of me making content, which uh, it was okay, I think, I hope. No, it wasn't. Uh, I worked on my dad's PC because I lived with my dad not in the capital but like it was a thing uh so like when i came back home uh well i can't not do youtube anymore uh i have all these scripts that and video ideas that i'm going to do i have a dmc retrospective that i'm going to start which i'm actually finishing in like two weeks hopefully yay um the way i went about making videos was basically write a script work on it for like two three weeks at least record all of your footage go to your cousin sit at his very underwhelming i3 four gigabyte ram laptop and just slave over horrible performance and somehow put out a video every month that's why i put out only one video a month because if I'm talking when I was making my DMC3 video, or rather the DMC reboot video, I needed some uh, clips of specific things that I talked about. So I had to take my hard drive, I had to go all the way across town home, record like five second and a half clips, and then go back so I could continue editing. And that's just the kind of environment I worked in for <laughs> pretty much a one year to the day but now it's over i have my own thing and the things that would have taken me four days to make in my previous thingamabob i did it in like 35 minutes i just lift your ass up go to the tv record your thing go back done also it's a gaming laptop that i have now so it can actually give me the video preview without lag which is also very fun. So I don't have to render out a video for three and a half hours uh, and then see that there's one extra frame somewhere that I have Oof. to shave off or else it will drive me fucking nuts. <sighs> and, you know, that whole battle with yourself that do I spend four more hours just sitting and watching the video render? Yeah. Answer is always yes, but... I always, uh, I always render my videos on the lowest possible settings just so I know sort of just so it's quicker to render when I'm reviewing it. Yeah, I, I'm not that smart. <laughs> I never got that idea. <laughs> I did it out of necessity because my uh, one of my videos was destroyed by bad editing habits. But yeah, so uh, PCs versus consoles. The way we're gonna address, the way we're gonna talk about this, um, basically, is just the, the advantages and disadvantages of each platform and sort of um um uh, well, then we're gonna crown that's... a winner yeah we're gonna crown a winner it's because... gonna be xbox let's just let's just face it <laughs> it's gonna be the uh, sega mega drive 
<laughs> it's uh, uh, like we have to crown a winner, uh, even though it's completely arbitrary, probably. <laughs> But it's sort of like uh, when people mean. review games for like, oh, what, 2018 in gaming, who won? Like, uh, Yo, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't work like that, but sure. So I think we should start with PC or console. Which do you guys want to talk about first? Console. All right. So the advantages, <laughs> of, <laughs> the advantages of a console are, first of all, an, uh, what's the word for that? A curated ecosphere ecosystem where you don't get a lot of you don't get a lot of the same games as PC does because PC is you develop on PC and you port over obviously but you get like exclusives because they need to sell the actual piece of plastic the PC has also, exclusives too it, uh, PC does not have great exclusives what? Arma 3 <laughs> uh. <laughs> the, the PC exclusives are some of the most popular games in the world. That's yeah. because everyone has a PC. Fucking That's League of Legends, the only reason. Counter Strike, Dota. Yeah. Well, okay. you can't play Dota on console. But those. Okay, yeah, but that's you can, my point. Yes, you that's can. P- you could map that game. game. You could you could downgrade that to a controller. <laughs> no, you can't. I used to have, Smite works, doesn't it? Smite is such a bad Yeah, game. it does, doesn't it? I hate Smite. Yeah, Smite is not isometric. Uh, yeah. No, no. No, but it they was... play uh, Pillars of Eternity came out on consoles. Yeah. But my point still stands that PC exclusives, even though we don't see them as such, are extremely popular. And okay, a, that's, a lot that... of the esports scene is built around PCs and not consoles. That's because fair. That's mostly because mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, but that's also... But um, those games the... only work with mouse and keyboard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you could like you could just get a mouse and keyboard for con- uh, consoles and just port those games clean over. You could, but no one's gonna play them that way. And I've seen discussions in Overwatch uh, subreddits where they just said, "No, fuck you! If you play with mouse and keyboard on a PlayStation, you should be banned." <laughs> yes, you, that is that is absolutely true. Uh, either either a hard ban. Or you get put into queue with other people who also play mouse and keyboard, or you just just get switched yeah. over to PC servers, which is what uh, the new Call of Duty is doing. Uh, yeah, they, because with they a have, cross-platform. Yeah, right? they have full, actual, true cross-platform where you can just send your PC friend an invite and you play together. Oof. And it, uh, if it works as well as uh, advertised or as it's advertised, it's basically the perfect system you can uh console can play with console which just means more population for the servers and you know more people play less dead games because when i played the darkness 2 nobody played the darkness 2 co-op so i effectively missed out on that experience altogether Mm. uh but if the very important thing to me that i don't know why infinity ward did it they certainly didn't have to, but if you play on mouse and keyboard on console, the game has uh, contingencies in place that detect mouse and keyboard input, even if you're using those like the dongles and the hacks and whatever. Huh. It still puts you into PC lobbies, which is really good. Yeah. And I huge props to Infinity Ward for that. All of your good developers are now in respawn, but hey. Really <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sort of going back to with um, the curated eco space, theoretically, and look, this hasn't happened, and it's never going to happen. But theoretically, because consoles control so much power in the video game sphere, like PlayStation alone has what 80, 90 million players. Sony could theoretically come out tomorrow and say. You know what? We're not actually going to do microtransactions anymore. We're just not going to let you put those in the games you sell on our platform. And if you want access to this 90 million player base, then you're going to have to rip those bad practices out of your games. So, there is a like like I say, that's not going to happen. It's it hasn't happened, not going to happen. But a curated eco space is a place where that theoretically could happen. And 
with a curated eco space, you could sort of drive better practices in game in game design and in uh, in uh, commerce. Again, hasn't happened. Happened well, Probably I think. Probably never will. <laughs> Probably never will. But that is something you can't really replicate on an open platform like PC. No, that's not true. Because yeah, the, yes P the PC has curated eco platforms or not, curated yeah, not, ecosystems in the sense not, of storefronts. Yeah, but that's that's not really that's not really a fair comparison because you could just pirate those games on PC, or you could just move the game to another storefront. Like the the, the if you pirate the game on PC, then you're not going to get microtransactions or loot boxes. No, but okay, yeah, but you can get you can just go on another storefront like. Steam could not tell Activision you can't have microtransactions, because if that happens, Steam just uh, Activision just goes, well, we don't really need you to sell our games. I feel but like a few years ago, Steam was actually in that position to do that. Now, I don't think not so. so much anymore. I think that if Steam had ever done that, the uh, sort of Steam monopoly would have broken down a lot quicker. Um, this actually feeds into one of the topics that I had for my segment in the first half about Activision and COD, so I will very briefly touch up on that. Yeah. Um, I had this theory that I shared with uh, a friend of mine who's uh, producing a video game that I, where I'm a video editor, and what if in a dream world, uh, Activision decided to give Treyarch Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer one more year to develop their games. So instead of a yearly release cycle, it's a bi-yearly release cycle. So your games have more time to develop. The game that is currently out, so let's say the next Call of Duty isn't coming out in 2020, but in 2021. As a consumer, number one, I'm much more inclined to spend more money on a game that I know will be around for an extra year, which is double the amount of time. I don't want to buy a bunch of shit for a game and then lose access to it in like uh, nine months. That just sucks. When I know that there's a bigger roadmap ahead of me, good. I'm going to give you more money or something. Uh, that's number one. Number two is more dev time for the game to actually be good and not be horrible like Black Ops 4 because Black Ops 4 was garbage and I wish I hadn't spent my money on it. <laughs> Are the Call of Duty games, they've, I don't play those games, but my understanding is that although they're not very, uh, exp like they're very iterative, they are always sort of polished, right? Yes, but there's always more that could be done, but not in a way that I wish there was more, but you're just looking at the game and it's a lacking. Black Ops uh -huh. 4 didn't have a single player campaign. World War II had very unbalanced multiplayer, not a good campaign. And as Black for Ops like, 3 had horrible campaign, but good multiplayer, so it's like a disbalance of quality. And just zombies yeah. can go fuck itself. I hate it. I want Spec <laughs> Ops back. Spec Ops. Is it a... Uh, is it a... Now, um, yeah. I, uh, I remember when... Which, where, which was the game which uh, had the dog and the place... In, they, took, they also took some place Ghosts. in space, right? Ghosts. Ghosts. That was Ghosts. Yeah. The uh, first next gen. I remember a lot of the critique of the single player was that it had like 30 different things to do and none of them was given enough time to sort of re be fully realized. Like the space section took, what, 10 minutes or something? And the Not dog even. section was a five minute section or whatever. And I think I kind of agree with you where if you want to... Like I don't, I'm not a big multiplayer guy. If you want to sell me a Call of Duty game, you have to sell me a single player game. I'm not interested in unrealized sequences. Mm -hmm. And uh, I agree with you on if you give them more time to work on it, you can have you know, better realized, you better realize their concepts. But I'm wondering, is this critique coming from you as a uh, consumer or you as a and in uh, a person who enjoys quality game design, or maybe both. Both. It's I try to keep both sides while at the same time 
reflecting on how it because like I grew up on Call of Duty like Call of Duty is mm. Call of Duty 2 Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2 are some of my favorite games ever made and like it's as easy as it is to make fun of COD because haha it's COD and Mountain Dew and Doritos <laughs> or whatever like it's still a franchise that a long time ago meant a great deal to me and now it's just garbage every year and it sucks but I remember I when so next uh, time Call of Duty different. was... <laughs> no, it won't. It, it won't. Because Activision... Like, at this point in time... Uh, and I'm quoting one of the lead developers for Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Dan sent me a very interesting interview. People don't... Like, a, when a publisher can make one game every year that's going to make a billion dollars, let's say that it's a guarantee. Mm. Why would they make 10 games that make $100,000 each? Or, I mean, $100 million each. So, like, that's uh, the general thought process of why make more varied, exciting things when we can make the same amount of money with only one product. And uh, Is it... Did they note the cost of it? Like, is it does it cost the same to make those ten games? Yeah, so to like make the one. Yeah, if you make ten small games, the budget of which equals to one big game, and they all make the same amount of money, it's logical to go for the one that is it's less work, uh, it's guaranteed, and you know some games from those ten might make uh, forty million. Some make some might make one hundred sixty million. But when you know that this one product is going to give you all of the yearly revenue that's going to hit the marks that the investors have for you, of course you're going to go for that. Yeah. But the second, the grimmer side of my uh, Activision example and why it will never happen is: imagine you are the person who is going to tell the investors that, hey, you know how we make like a billion and a half dollars every year because we make this one game every year? Uh, we're going to skip that and just <laughs> go buy yearly. Number one, you're fired. <laughs> Everyone who supports you is fired. Number two, that is against the law because if you do something as a businessman, I'm not very good in law, but like the, I know the general consensus of how it works. If you do, if you issue an order that directly affects how much money the company is going to make, if I say something that will lead the company to make one dollar less than last year, I am viable to get sued by the company. Because I am the reason they made less money. And what? after. Really? Capitalism. That's what happens when people who make money make the laws. It's not exactly like that. There's a lot of intricacies in there and a lot of like loopholes and things that go around. But the general consensus is that if I make a decision that leads the company to make $2 billion less every other year, of course the company is going to fire me and then sue me for damages and just ruin my entire life. I don't know if they can sue you. Yeah, I don't know Bob about Bob Iger of Disney, he doesn't, like, when um, Han Solo, when the Han Solo movie flopped, it wasn't, like, Kathleen Kennedy wasn't sued for damages. No one was yeah, sued for but, damages. Well, maybe you don't get sued. Maybe you do. B the point is that the thing that is obviously better f for the medium, which is better production, better produced games that are worth the money that I pay for the games and, you know, longer life cycles, more interactions with the fan base, that's never going to happen because inherently everything revolves around investors and money, which is shitty, but that's how it is. I, yeah. I see what you mean, but I don't think it's inherently better considering that a company also needs to stay afloat over the span of multiple years. And you can't really put your image to the public. You can't really put PR in. Absolutely. You, you can't put it in, in, in terms of money. 
absolutely. But my headcanon, my best case scenario for this, I thought more than justified on this topic, I don't know why, would be to combine my two examples. You know, make Call of Duty by yearly but the years when you should have released another Call of Duty, release five games that you expect to make 20% of uh, what Call of Duty would have made. More games, better games, more stuff for everyone. Life is good, but you know. We need to go reason. back to um, the SA yeah. topic. PC oh, versus consoles. Oh, let's go I, into the, the, the SA I tend, to, <laughs> I tend to sidetrack a lot, you know. It's a problem. <laughs> and they say I'm not a good host. Look how I brought it all back. Whoa. After 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you, let, I was yeah, ranting for fine. 10 minutes? Okay, uh, you're a bad host, AC. I remember <laughs> back in the day, uh, I remember back in the day, I was like a super devout PlayStation fan, and my friends were all PC. And they all explained that, oh, you know, if everyone had a PC, it would be a lot better. And my reasoning back then, and... I've been vindicated in this reasoning in recent years. No, it wouldn't be better because there isn't going to be a mono platform. What's going? What would happen is Steam doesn't exist in without all these other outlets. When PC is the only game in town, what happens is Activision decides. You know what? I don't know if Valve needs to take a twenty percent cut on our games, and Ubisoft thinks. You know, this Uplay store we've got going, uh, I think we should invest more money into that. And EA does the same with Origin, and all of a sudden, you lose all the big publisher licenses you had on Steam, because those guys don't see any need to be dealing with that's Valve. That's what's already happening. Yeah, no, th that's, that's happening today. And the PlayStation today, already exists. No, but I'm saying, this is what I was st st telling my friends like 10 years ago. Before all of this happened, back when Steam had the PC monopoly, I explained, no, when the consoles leave, the PC market is going to be some so fragmented and it's just going to be awful. And now that's happening even without the uh, consoles yeah. leaving. So it's not really about the PC being a mono platform. It's, no, that's but... That's just what happens when these companies grow even bigger and have more IPs under their names. And true, see how, how some storefronts make a lot of money and they want in on that fucking money. True, but that doesn't happen on console. New consoles get made, though. I mean, Do we, they? Like, you Do don't they? have... EA does not say, no, if you want to buy our games on uh, online on PlayStation, then you have to go to the EA app on, play, on the PlayStation. Sony wouldn't. Sony just would, would go. No, you don't do that. You buy it through the PlayStation Store. Sure. Uh, yeah, the, the market true. defragmentation does not occur on a console. At least not yet. Well, yeah. <laughs> For the foreseeable future. But I mean, we 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 are seeing Stadia right now. We are. I think yeah. Apple is also trying to get into the game. Or well, maybe those are just rumors. But it's not like there can't be other companies trying to, to build their own console systems and then you also fragment that player base. Not really, because you still have you still have PlayStation. You just add to the player base. You add to the sort of game no, sphere. No, what? If, yeah. I, if I get an Apple machine and not a PlayStation, then I didn't, you didn't add anything. Yes, you add, assumably you add the exclusives which the new platforms would create to entice players to come over. Yeah, but then I don't get a PlayStation and then no, other but people that, stay at PlayStation and then the player base is fragmented. Yeah, but that's, see, my point is still that you still have access to the third party games and the only thing that's really changed is that there are more exclusives in the marketplace right now. There's more experimental, interesting games which aren't necessarily going to make money, but they're going to appease a very niche uh, player base to entice them to come over to the new platform. So more storefronts, more uh, consoles is ultimately the better way that the industry should float. That's, an, that, that's I kind of agree. I don't but at all. But at the same time, at the, like, I agree that the more competition there is in the market, the weirder shit people make because like looking at xbox versus ps4 for example ps4 has been 
uh, undoubtedly nobody can dispute it. It's been dominating this generation. Xbox lost. So mm -hmm. what does Xbox do? They pucker up their buttholes and they make some decisions that actually matter. Game you Pass. Buy a bunch of studios. Buy a bunch of studios. Make interesting subscriptions. Get into subscription cross services. Get into crossplay. Make more decisions because like a perfect example of this is the Microsoft adaptive controller that's for uh, people with disabilities. Sony wouldn't make an adaptive controller because they don't need to appeal to anyone because they already appeal to the majority of people who play video games on if console. If you remember, if you remember last generation, it was Sony that was urging Microsoft to, to, to do crossplay. Yeah, but not as far. They because didn't go as far. They didn't have as anything to lose by that. Neither Microsoft. did Microsoft this generation, and now they're kind exactly. of coming up as the crowd favorite because they're the underdog. And hey, like we're trying, we're doing our best, and we're we're trying hoping, to appease players. We're hey, trying to appeal guys, to players. Do you yeah, guys exactly. want backwards compatibility? Like, there's no way the PlayStation Five, for example, can launch without backwards compatibility. But that's um only that's for PS4. Not, yeah, yeah, but that's I don't know. I feel like we're sort of being disingenuous here because PC. I think naturally is backwards compatible. So well, obviously, I, in I have comparison. Onimusha three that's only available on PS two and PC on a machine that was made like two years ago. Yeah, PC doesn't have generations. Well, strictly speaking, PC just uh, if you want to play an old game on PC, you just need to make sure someone has uh, some modder has updated it so it works with your new drivers and all that stuff. If it does, even, but yes. Generally, yeah, I've run into some trouble trying to play Legacy of Kane. But that's real old. Like the only thing I needed. Yes, I know um, I'm old. Is this like a widescreen patch? <laughs> hey, like Boken, a... you're a boomer. Have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> Boken boomer, Re rename your channel right fucking now. <laughs> I'm gonna bully Daniel when uh, we re I record with him next week. Just so you know. Okay, gonna... then I'll, be, I'll I'll make sure to be mentally ready for you to bully me uh, <laughs> next time I'm on here. No, I wouldn't bully you. You're a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're into cool stuff like like comic books. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like Star. I have a dude book and the logo for my channel is my Star Wars tattoo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm way out there. <laughs> hey, I'm far beyond saving. Talking about sort of uh, embarrassing tattoos. When I was hey, young, fuck you. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> when it. I was young, I rem you, do you guys remember being teenagers and first getting into politics? No, because I'm still not into politics. So I don't <laughs> give a shit. I do. Yeah. Well, suffice it to say, there's not a lot of nuance on uh, when you're 14 years old. You don't have a lot of nuanced opinions. You just have sort of like extremist opinions. So like, there's not gonna be. Well, I'm a technocratic conservative at 14. No, it's, I don't it's even gonna, know what that is. No, but I'm just making. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just throwing words together here. But 14 year olds, it's like could have fooled me. <laughs> 14 year olds, they like extreme ideologies. So this is when I got my first tattoo. I'd been playing a bunch of Bioshock as a very sort of edgy preteen, and I got the uh, Bioshock chain tattoos because I was like. Objectivism is the only way. It is the only way. And no I still <laughs> slaves are king. No gods. Only men. And I, the I sweat still sweat from your brow. I still have the tattoos. And at work, I always make sure that my shirt is really nicely tucked because I never want anyone to see it. So we all I mean... have embarrassing tattoos. I, I don't, see, the thing is, I don't have tattoos at all. You're not cool they, enough to have a tattoo. Yeah, you're Boken. not cool enough, Boken. Actually, I, I, I never knew what I wanted to get as a tattoo. But I recently saw someone on the bus who had, like, along his arm, a bunch of seemingly random, like, strokes of a paintbrush, like paintbrush strokes of different size. And it was red and black, different types of paintbrush across his arm. And that looked really fucking good. It looked kind of Asian in a way. And you're going to tell me you're not a weeb. Really? <laughs> no, no, no. Asian paintbrush tattoos and you're not a weeb. Hmm. It, 
I'm kidding. <laughs> it's it's difficult to describe, but it was like it was random, but not random enough that you would think it like this looks just like someone went ham. Mm. There was obviously a system to a, a a system to the chaos, basically. If you want to link your tattoo back into the essay topic, you could just get a tattoo that says "Master Race," but I don't <laughs> think that would uh, <laughs> I don't think that would fly. Doesn't play well in Germany. Nah. If I ever if oof if I ever. <laughs> Uh, see Matt Lucas in person, I'm going to win a dare and I'm going to have him get, like, uh, objectivity is a lie tattooed on his, on, on his butt cheek or something. But anyway, but, the, um, the point being that that tattoo looked really awesome. I've, <laughs> I've never found it and I... You don't find that, you make that. And if it's paintbrush, no, you can just I go can to an artist and you can I can tell a tattoo artist to... To, to just do a bunch of random paintbrush, paintbrush strokes? Yes, you can. But That's then I, job. But then I won't know That's if it will look good. Because I can Google yeah. paint, paintbrush tattoos. No, dude. It looks like before, shit. Listen, Boken, Boken, listen. Before you get a tattoo, uh, if you already have your sketch, uh, the artist prints out the sketch on a piece of paper and then uses some kind of magic uh, substances he like gels the area with like some oil, puts the paper on your on the area, and then traces it with a pen. Hmm. And when you take the paper off, the ink from the pen is on your arm, and you can see how it looks before you actually get the thing. Hmm. And that you can done do that in color too. Like, dude, tattooing is a very intricate process with, a, with many many steps. Yeah, I know. And the tattoo I saw was so detailed and also intricate and. Yeah, that that's was what cost made it money. so good. Yeah, I didn't care about the money. The problem is but that I, I, I have this vision in my head, but I can't explain it to an artist. So I have the feeling that if he just does it, it's going to look shit. <laughs> well, then you have to find an artist that you can trust because I have an artist who I can trust. I get all my shit with him. Hmm. Yeah. Back to the essay topic, though. <laughs> and this is the, this, we want to talk about Rainus. everything but that shit. <laughs> hey, Dan isn't here, okay? We're having fun. This was the final departure that I, as a host, am going to allow. <laughs> We're going to get to the topic now. Actually, there we'll was, see about that. The Zero Punctuation did a review once where he said he was going to review FIFA 19 or something. And then he just every time. What he did I just every say? Every time he just started talking about FIFA 19, he in a, <laughs> in a sentence went to a completely different game. <laughs> and he did like three games in five minutes. <laughs> and then and I made a video about having FIFA. never talked about FIFA. We're not good. doing this, guys. Stop <laughs> the bit. We're d we're doing the essay question. So, um, I would say that the main advantage of a console. And look, I'm not saying which one is better. Like, I'm just saying, if if you're giving an advantage to a console, it's one, by necessity, they're going to have to have some exclusives so that they so that some people would at all just buy the platform. So you're going to get an uh, investment in weird games or niche games. And two, there is the potential for curation, which could be very healthy. Like I noted earlier about how... You know, PlayStation could just kill microtransactions on their platform, and Activision and EA, they would just have to eat that, right? It's either you abandon that entire player base, or you just behave sensibly. And if Sony were to do that, Microsoft would have to follow along. Because the players are not going to look at Microsoft and go, oh yeah, well they allow these practi predatory practices, and we'll rather play on their platform. However, there are also a lot of disadvantages to consoles. Also, that's barely an advantage because it's just not going to happen. No, well, l we have to be as generous as we can here. That absolutely <laughs> is an advantage. It's a narrative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to push a narrative. I'm just saying you can you can have that. That comes with the package. It doesn't necessarily happen in such an extreme, but like. You, Curation is a, is a it does happen on consoles. Like you don't get incomplete games on consoles to the extent that you get them on PCs. Uh, Assassin's Creed 
France aside, of course. Assassin's Creed France? Yeah, that was a when they launched Assassin's the Creed French Unity. Yeah, Unity. That game was not complete. But a a, a game on a console. Was it recall. 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 That Recall. was an Xbox exclusive. They yeah. did a definitive edition on that. They add that added <laughs> some stuff that was missing. And also games which are meant to be incomplete, like apparently Deadly Premonitions, which I haven't played. But um, I played mm-hmm. it there is that sort of stamp of quality which you get on console, which doesn't exist on PC. Like Steam actively markets incomplete products. Uh, I don't know. First of all, Steam isn't the only platform anymore. Um, no, it, that's, they're still that's the biggest. Really, they're, that's not they're the, the biggest one still, right? Yes, but yeah. th- that's not yeah. a, that's not a PC problem. That's a Steam problem. And in my no, mind, that's a that's a that is a PC problem. No, it's not. not really. No, 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 in, no, 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 no. no. Epic Epic games doesn't Acer. have these shitty games. Hey, sir. If you take a look at any of the other launchers, and I know I've uh, created a Steam account two days ago, and that's the only experience I have with Steam and PC. But Steam has all of these. Like you can make a game in 10 minutes and put it on Steam for sale for 5 cents. Yeah. And Epic Games, and it can be just a Java game that you used to play on your dad's phone when you were 11. Mm-hmm. Like, Epic Games... The, well, I, I had one of those. Yeah, me too. Uh, Epic <laughs> Games doesn't allow that. Yeah, good no, old like, games doesn't allow that. No, but I'm... You don't have my, shit like that. My like point, you play or... No, but it is still whatever. a PC problem because you could self-publish an incomplete game on PC. At, in what platform? Just online. Yeah, sure. You but can, then you nobody can make gives a, a shit. game and throw it on your website as a download. It's not necessarily... It's not, look, it's not the biggest... Like, that's not the standard of how PC games launch. I agree with that, but... It is still how a lot of games on PC launch. Just because there's a possibility that you could make a game and throw it up on your website and then have that game be shitty, that doesn't mean that that's an inherent problem. That's not a problem that PC can either resolve or not have. It's just what something that comes with being a device or an ecosystem or a thing that works in the way that PC works. In my mind, yeah. that, that's can't curate not, the well, internet. What you described, Acer, is not a problem that like 99% of people on the PC platform actually run into. Every time uh, Jim Sterling goes out there and finds the worst games on Steam, I just have to wonder how the fuck is he even finding these? <laughs> what is he doing wrong? <laughs> what keywords is he is he putting into yeah. the search bar? <laughs> I don't think he's doing anything wrong. He's doing no, anything look, right. someone I, I, someone described that on Twitter once as Jim Sterling jumping into a fucking garbage bin and then complaining about all the garbage around him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very very <laughs> legitimate <laughs> argument. Uh, no, look, it's not. It it is a part of the ecosystem, but it's not like a massive problem. I am I'm absolutely I'm not trying to say that this is the problem with PC. Most games absolutely do not launch that way, but you still don't have that seal of quality from PC. You have to stop saying PC as if it's one platform. No, I, I don't, because we're comparing PCs versus consoles. It's we're, we're comparing an open platform but, versus the closed yeah, platform, the stuff aren't you're, we? You're saying that uh, the consoles have is something that you will find on good old games or on, on uh, the Epic Launcher. Oh, and the, that or kind the of Blizzard curation, launcher, yeah, or, or the, the Blizzard or you launcher. play, or that Origin. kind of curation does happen. It's ju- it just doesn't happen on Steam, which, which happens to be the biggest storefront on the PC right now. Because it was the first store. If Epic Games was the first store, it'd be in the exact same uh, condition as how Steam did, is. How did Epic? finance that was it just they released fortnite, fortnite? yeah fortnite it was fortnite, fortnite. Yeah, they're, they're wasn't kind of it? forcing their way in it's <laughs> fortnite money you do Fort- fortnite makes so much money <laughs> epic games can do whatever the fuck they fortnite want. money and investment from the communist chinese government have you guys been paying attention to that apparently epic games is chinese spyware oh uh, yeah sure of i heard that yes <laughs> Okay, well, for the then, record, I'm not endorsing the Epic Games launcher. I'm just 
Me neither. It's a argument. horrible piece of software yeah. that I very much dislike, but at least it doesn't have very lazily clobbered together things that can be barely called video games, let alone entertaining. But then what would the uh, difference between consoles and PC really be if we afford that there is curation on PC? It doesn't ha- It's not nearly as impactful as yeah, it is honestly, on consoles. The, the, the platforms are kind of just growing to one large mass because a lot of games that come out on PC also come out on platforms and are usually made with with uh, air on, on consoles and they're usually made with console uh, controllers in mind so even on a PC it's usually better to play those on a, on a pad right mm. and then a lot of PC exclusive games so that are PC exclusive at first and have spe- specialized controls for keyboard and mouse then get ported to consoles later that has been happening more and more and then now we have Xbox which maybe they don't even like I don't know what uh, project, what is it, Scarlet is going to yeah. be. Yeah, Project Scarlet. But they mm-hmm. have been kind of, you know, they, they are also growing uh, their Xbox and their PC ecosystems In, together, you know. Yeah, they, into like a uni. Yeah, they're bringing out a Game Pass entity. for PC. They have the, the Windows Store. All that stuff is just kind of merging right now. Yeah. And the main difference is you, the, the way you can build a PC for yourself. So you can always have the best performance on a PC. And, of course, the control schemes. Which, on a PC, you can have every control scheme. And that's completely supported. It's not as easy on a console. Do you think we'll ever get to the point where, and we sort of, uh, we made fun of this earlier, but do you think it'll ever happen that, like, you just buy a console and it has 20 different launchers for every studio? (laughs) No. Because a console is manufactured by one single entity, Microsoft, so everything that gets put on that console has to directly uh, give Microsoft profit from every Uh single purchase. And you can't have... Epic Game Store on PS4. Do you think we'll ever get to the point where Activision, EA, those guys, they decide, you know what, we'll just make our own consoles. Yeah, we'll, absolutely. Just ha- we'll just have our own platforms absolutely. because we don't we don't want to do this anymore. Absolutely. Someone you, will take the step. Do you think they would survive doing that? No. <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, I don't think... Uh, well, I don't know. Well... Maybe. Maybe there could just be a Call of Duty console. The Call of Duty machine. Yeah. I mean, Xbox the 360... The Virginator 3000. <laughs> Xbox 360 was sold as, like, the this Halo is the machine. COD machine. Yeah, the Halo machine. The and Halo then machine. it became sort of the COD machine. And PlayStation 3, unfortunately, had to just double down on exclusives. And then they took the next generation. Yeah, at this point, uh, I'm going to derail the uh, topic Excuse me? For, for a second <laughs> You're walking here. on thin ice. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I still As, uh, don't... not getting invited I... <laughs> back. At, don't <laughs> let Atmos know to come on here again. Full stop. <laughs> Fuck you, Daniel. Um... I really, really, really like the decisions that Microsoft has made in the last years because the only thing, like at this point today, and this has been true at least for me for, I don't know, about a year now, if not more, uh, the only thing that PlayStation has that Xbox doesn't, if we don't count like sales numbers and number (laughs) of players and whatever, is exclusives, like exclusive games. Everything else is just at least for me, better on Xbox. I like the controller better, which is probably because I've been using it for eight odd years. The controller is Um, better. I recently got got an Xbox One controller and it's really good. I I think controller, I think that's a completely irrelevant point. I feel like you adjust to the controller. You do. Like an Xbox controller is only better when you have, when you don't have, like if I'm using an Xbox controller, it's going to feel better and then as soon as I move to a PlayStation controller, it's going to feel better then even. Like, I don't... I, 
A controller is just a controller in my hands. Do you guys actually feel there is concrete differences in it? Yes, stick placement. Oh. I realize it after the fact. I realize yeah. now how fucking awful the uh, PlayStation 3 controller, controller is. And yeah, stick placement is a thing. Although I wasn't used to the stick, pla stick placement on the PlayStation 4 controller and I got used to it. And then I switched back to the Xbox controller and was fine. But yeah. yeah, but like moving on from the controller, the thing is uh, Xbox has uh, so many more things to do. Like there's Game Pass, of course, like number one. I was very hesitant to buy Game Pass because like 10 bucks a month. And for me, 10 bucks is 30 bucks because USD is my economy is not doing very well. But this is money well spent. Every single exclusive I get on day one. I spent like almost 100 hours on Forza Horizon ah, 4. Fuck, that's but, right. We're getting a bunch of streaming services for video games soon. Everyone wants their own yeah. Game Pass. Fuck. But Game Pass is... Even though it ushered in an era of buying subscriptions and having the Netflix of gaming, oh, it, it's, it is still just... Oh. You want a game that comes out next month but you don't want to pay 60 bucks? Pay 10 bucks. Try the game for a month. If you like it, either buy the game or keep paying for Game Pass so you can enjoy like 140 other games. And now... It's available on PC since I... Oh, wait, that's right. I didn't think about that. Since I have Game Pass on my Xbox, I can download games Do you also PC. get it on like, PC then? Yeah, but not every game. Like, PC has its own library of games that gets updated whenever the other, ones, the other one does. But some games, like the uh, Microsoft exclusives, day one, Game Pass, PC, and console with crossplay. Bleeding Edge is going to do that, and I can't wait. That's that's my tangent. You can rein in the podcast back to the topic. Okay. Now, basically. Uh, <laughs> mods. We're gonna talk about mods. Mm. Mods are fun. No, because that's an advantage PCs just inherently have over consoles. And uh, like Xbox has moved towards sort of allowing mods on their platform. It's still not the same. No. It's 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 a curated mod community for Bethesda it, games. Other yes, more and so also than just else. there. The fact that mods aren't made on a console, they are made on a PC. Like, that that speaks to the fact that it's never going to be the same either. It's always going to be... It's always going to be PC first. Because you can open up a browser window, download a mod, click three buttons, and have 20% uh, have DMC5 run at basically, which is turbo mode on steroids, which is 130% speed... You can't do that on console. You can just tamper with game files or mm. download things to add onto your games or download software that lets you unlock some things that gives you access to more mods. Shout out to Skyrim Script Extender for making my life so much easier. But it's just, again, that's how PC works. It's a computer. It is not a gaming console that's oriented just around gaming. So you can do... Mm, everything you have multi-functionality you, you have discord yeah. mm -hmm. you, have you have discord rooms. yeah well i think that is there no uh, chat system just inherent in consoles uh, well, well xbox has the parties parties you know yeah but even then typing on a controller is, is god awful you yes. can just type on a keyboard <laughs> so you have to get a keyboard for your console <laughs> you have to get a playstation brand keyboard <laughs> Or you just download the app on your phone and send oh, your messages boy. there. Oh, uh, easy, easy mode. Xbox so has chat heads. Come on. We're almost two hours in right now. So, um, do you guys have more points to make about more distinguishments, more Life is distinguishing pain. elements? That is oh, my yeah. distinguishment for today. But that's not that has nothing to do with the essay topic. I think you'll find. Does is essay involved with life? Yes. Is life pain? Yes. Is existence pain? Probably. Case closed. It's, I'm trying I'm to make jokes and I'm failing. Okay. I'm you seeing some slack. I'm seeing double here. It's two bokens. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Boken. I don't get How it. are you doing? 
Neither uh, do I. It's okay. Do you think I Dan will let me uh, host the next episode with him? No. Probably not. Because I won't let you host the next episode. <laughs> You're not going to be there. Oh, that one. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Who are you bringing for the next episode, by the way? Uh, I don't know if we are bringing anyone. I joke <laughs> that we're going to bring my Yukio friends in, but like, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Daniel would allow that. Hey, sir, the, uh, the right answer was not me. Oh, I'll 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 contact Chris Avalon see if he <laughs> wants to do it. <laughs> sure, when I'm not around. Yeah, you're okay with that, right? <laughs> you uh, you don't mind, do you? So which platform is ultimately better? PC. Uh, no, whichever, competition. Which competition fits, is better? Which more platforms fits your needs more? No, not more platforms. More because platforms. More platforms is more shit to buy. Don't. No. Do you really like spending money on Don't plastic make me boxes? Don't think to about our future with the billion streaming services that I will have to put up with. <laughs> you can just buy one month. No, more platforms, more exclusives, no. more incentives to invest, stop. more investment in niche media. You need to stop. Yeah, but why do you assume that it's going to be good niche games and not Call of Duty is only going to be on this console? That and that's because, it. Because I don't. I don't play those triple a yearly release franchises. So if they want my money, they're gonna have to invest in more niche products. Or they just will make money on off of people who only play the buy yearly release products because that's the majority of video gamers in the world. No, With the, the majority of video game players in the world is, uh, I think you'll find, is mobile players. <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not included. I'm not. Yeah, we, we don't talk oh, about. We didn't here. talk about the mobile platform. Oh shit! It sucks. Fuck. No, 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 no. Shit. <laughs> hey, I play a mobile game. I play a fucking. MOBA on mobile and I love it and it's very if we're, very if we're fun, talking about predatory practices mobile is just disgusting it's just it's hive not of even scum gaming and villainy. system for me it's uh, hive of scum and villainy no I like like I, I want more platforms I would like a fourth console I, I was hoping for the soldier boy console to be successful oh it is your boy uh, did that launch? Did he or did he just refund everyone? Uh, uh, I, don't, I know. don't know. I don't particularly care. <laughs> so, uh, Bogan, yeah. what's your stance? PC or console? PC, 100%. I play both. Okay. Uh, I grew up with a PC, and I think mouse and keyboard is superior. Just a superior uh, control scheme for most do, things. Would you, would you like to see uh, the console sphere disappear? Or do you think there is a room for both? Uh, that's a good question. Mm. I, In its current form, I think it's too powerful. And it... What is? The console the, sphere? The console sphere and most games are built with consoles in mind, which immediately decides how they run and how they control and what, what you can do in them. What graphical specs. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of... Like the PC often feels like an afterthought, which bugs me. So, But it, I don't know. It's I obviously don't want consoles to end... Thank you. I wish there were Same. certain games that only came out on PC. Certain genres. Like first-person shooters on consoles make me want to kill myself. I don't know. I think that um, first-person horror games on consoles work, sort of. Sure, but I said first-person shooters. There are first-person shooter horror games. You can throw chairs in Amnesia the Dark Descent. <laughs> what a shooter. <laughs> okay. And uh, then, yeah. you know, stuff like isometric games, strategy games. Strategy games died in part because oh. yeah. consoles. it's difficult yeah. to, to... Now that I have a PC, I can't wait to play Total War Shogun 2 because I never got to play that and my inner weeb is going to have so much fun. Actually, I, sh I should say real-time strategy games died. Uh, yeah. Forex also alive and kicking. What is the exact genre name for Pillars of Eternity? Isometric RPG? No, that's a yes. No, that's a C RPG. It's a classic RPG. Oh, those that genre pretty much died too, didn't it? Yeah, but it's coming back now. 
But yes, yeah. it died. Sure. Atmos, same questions I asked Boken. PC or pla- console? Um. Oh boy. Well, or do you want to be a radical centrist? I want to say, look, play on whatever brings you more joy. If you want to play Overwatch on console, you can play Overwatch on console. I play a- I play ranked Apex Legends on an Xbox, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, like, but you don't I'm, have to I'll put do up on- with a bunch of console play uh, with a bunch of PC. <laughs> Well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> they matters. can talk to me. I, I I get to shoot them in the face either way. Like no, play on whatever you the, want. No, because the PC players would fucking maul you because they have, like, it's it's just a better control system. And that is not saying that you're not good or bad at the game, but those are segregated communities for a reason because uh, a controller just can't keep up in a shooter with a with a mouse and keyboard. You know, no, it can't. Multiplayer, but when I played multiplayer when, games, okay. multi- <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk trash to book and let me talk. <laughs> multiplayer <laughs> games on PC are always going to favor the uh, the more powerful computer. So rich, so PCs naturally oh. favor rich people in multiplayer games. Yeah, so it's inherently, objectively, play to win. Uh, pay to win. Yeah. And that's why PC sucks. <laughs> we solved video games, everyone. Oh, no. Also, this is coming from a fucking trading card gamer. Oh, PC, PC gaming is the original pay to win. <laughs> what? Did you just call me a trading card game player? Yes. I hardly play any trading card games. You know, I traded a... Uh, a uh, tw- Back when Danger Tsuginoko was worth $20... I traded it for super polymerization and star- uh, starving venom at their highest rarities, and then Sukinoko went to fifty bucks, and I was like, "Ah oh, man, that sucks." But then super poly and starving venom went to like sixty bucks when they spiked, and I was like, "Yeah." I understood absolutely <laughs> none of what you just said. Well, it's like you guys don't even play Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I... <laughs> That's, that's, hundred... that's Daniel territory. That's way too weak. <laughs> Yukio is based. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but uh, yeah, I like... Uh, I stand by what I said. I like more competition. I definitely don't want there to be just one platform. I think they all sort of work to keep each other honest. Kind of. If that makes sense. I don't like want to I, buy way I'm, too many devices. That's that's my standing. Yeah, I, I'm super happy to see Xbox. Like I'm primarily a PlayStation guy. I'll I'll say that. I've always sort of Sony has a real stronghold here in Iceland. But when I look at Xbox doing backwards compatibility and I see them doing uh like this with a Game Pass even even though I probably would never buy a Game Pass. Like when I see Xbox doing these things which are inherently just better for the consumer i look at playstation and say huh now you guys have to do that too but they don't no but they don't this generation like the playstation 5 cannot launch without backwards compatibility it, you can't right you, i was i was it's I, the same I, thing I, I as when to, uh I when xbox one launched yeah I'll, I'll i'll let you just yeah i know it's like when xbox one launched and they were like well you can't you can't reuse games and you can't resell games and if you own a game you have to sort of put the serial code in the computer so we know that this copy has been used and then sony just went no you can if, if your friend wants to borrow your game you just put, give him the disc that was a, that that ad was genius i love it yeah like that's like xbox lost the console generation because they had such a complete misreading of what industry they were in like, who are you marketing this dumb computer to? But, uh, Atmos, I'll, I'll let you go. Uh, let you say what you wanted to <laughs> say. What you wanted to say. <laughs> um, now I forgot. God damn it. Oh. It's backwards compatibility. Right. PS5 and Xbox 2? 720? <laughs> Scarlet. PS5 and Scarlet are both going to have backwards compatibility for this generation. 
that we currently have, that's confirmed. Like we know it is is here because a lot of tech geeks who know processors and PC parts said that hey, these processors are it's basically a PC now where you just upgrade parts instead of making a completely new interface, whatever. Mm. But PS5 is only going to have PS4 games, while Xbox is going to have Xbox One games, Xbox 360 games, and OG Xbox games. Granted, not every single one, because they still have to be optimized by hand, but they still added, like, two titles every week into Mm. backwards compatibility for, like, two years. And they made OG Xbox emulation possible, so effectively, if you have an Xbox 2... You have all of all Xbox One games, a shit ton of 360 games that you can just press download or just pop into your console and play it, and a bunch of classic like you guy can play Ninja Gaiden Black or mm-hmm. Knights of the Old Republic or Jedi do we Academy know, or whatever do, on my one. Do we know Sony's reasoning? I mean, the PlayStation Five, I assume, is going to be powerful enough to just internally emulate the PS2. Surely. Uh, the PS2, yes. Absolutely. PS the, PS, the PS3 is just a disaster. The PS3 is right. an engineering disaster because it had like six cores that... Uh, but it was all combined, right? It was all combined and they worked in tandem but not really or something. And it was just a badly designed machine from a mechanical perspective. And that's why PS3 emulation... like You can emulate Xbox 360. It's not good... It doesn't huh. work almost all of the time, but it's in theory it's possible with hardware that can, you know, carry that weight. But PS3 is just impossible. Like it, it can't be done in a comprehensible manner. You just wait. Some Russian kid moment. is gonna do well, it. Well, yeah, of course, some Russian kid. He's is gonna, gonna do it. He's gonna emulate a PS3 on like a calculator. <laughs> Those Russian techno geeks. It's like how that one. They'll also create some grip. weird cryptocurrency yeah. out of it. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Yeah, but uh, so that's sort of our conversation. Uh, I Basically, think we stayed on topic. Me raging for a very time. long time. No, not really. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's how it usually so, goes. Well, I feel like I've done more than uh, adequate of a job as host, Boken. Would you agree? <laughs> Bogan <laughs> Bogan Bogan cut out everyone he he actually he lost connection to the chat no, no, I, I think I heard him I think I heard him um I, I I'm not sure um Bogan, my are you water there? bottle fell down yes I'm here <clears throat> <laughs> so yeah uh where, where can we find you guys Atmos what are you doing what are you working on I make YouTube videos on YouTube, on YouTube, and at most fabula. I have a Twitter that I barely use. I'm more of an Instagram boy because I like to take pictures and make stuff on Instagram. So at most fabula everywhere. If Steam, I follow you Spotify, on Instagram, whatever. am I going to see a bunch of the Georgian castles? Uh, soon, but not yet because I'm uh, in the city. Okay. But you can follow me anyway. So. What's your what are your what are your your account on Instagram? At most fabula. Oh, there you go, Bogan. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? What do you do? I also do videos on YouTube. On oh. youtubecom slash You do. C slash Bogenjima, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Same here. C slash Atmos fabula. I haven't made a video Custom links, in a yep. while because the you video... also you also make videos on YouTube. I never knew this. Yes, I have made. I haven't uploaded one in a, in a while because the one I'm working on right now is like the hardest fucking script I ever writ- I have ever written, and I've been. Uh, I've had writer's block for a long time on that shit, but I think it's done now, and now I just need to record. But when do you good. think you can uh, upload? Well, it's gonna take a while because I just bought a some kind of audio screen so that I can clean up my fucking audio first. And then mm. I will record, and then let's see when it's done. All Fair. right. All right. 
I'm also on YouTube and the Twitter with the same name. And uh, I'm working on a bunch of stuff. Including uh, you surfing hosting duties for this podcast. <laughs> Good luck with that. I feel like uh, I feel like Bogan will turn come around. So yeah, that was this episode. Play us out, guys. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. Tolerating our impotent gamer rage. Our epic gamer rants. <laughs> Not really. Bye-bye.